Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I'm back with another review. And today, this is a very special review. Well, I say that often, but it really is a special review. Because we're taking a look at from Transformers Legacy Wave 3, this is Armada Universe Starscream. Now, while Starscream was not the first Transformer I bought from Armada, its repaint Thundercracker was. And that was really the first Transformer I bought, along with like a minicon set, um, at, you know, for the first time in over 10, 15 years at the, you know, maybe even longer. So yeah, a lot of memories with this fig, with this figure, with this mold. And I'm really glad to see it again. Um, this is actually the second uh, release, or I should say, uh, the second time Armada Starscream has had an homage back in Thrilling 30 the uh, figure was done at a deluxe size. This is a Voyager size. And that was really cool. And even in Japan, it got repainted into blue. Now keep in mind, in Japan and in the cartoon, Starscream, just be when he became blue, it wasn't Thundercracker. It was actually uh, a super mode, power links mode for him. They might have called him Thundercracker in the cartoon, I'm not sure, but um, it's been a while since I watched. Also, just keep in mind that um, this version of Starscream, very different character than we've seen before with Starscreams. Even though it's a Decepticon, and I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler for a cartoon that's 22, 21 years old, um... Starscream ended up joining the Autobots for a time. It was what was it was a much more noble and honorable character. So we're starting off in jet mode, and I gotta say, it looks really good. This is what I remember uh, from Armada. Now, unfortunately, there is no included minicon, but we do have a minicon weapon, and that is the Star Saber. And at this point, I will say again, I don't remember the cartoon. But I always remember the Star Saber being associated more with a uh, hot shot than with Starscream. But it's possible uh, the character did use it for a little bit. Um, I kind of feel it's a little undersized um, compared to the size of the uh, figure. But it's here. And I guess it's here because the other accessory we have is Starscream's wing sword. Yes, that means the wing does not transform into the sword, and I was a little disappointed by that because that was a hallmark signature feature of the original Starscream toy. Even the Thrilling 30 figure found a way to work in a transforming blade into the wing. Um, but it's here, not a lot of paint to it, um, I, I will say, though, that it does appear the Star Saber has the paint that we were supposed to get. I had heard something that um, it, it was going to come all gray or something like that, or maybe all blue. I don't remember, but, I mean, this does look okay compared to what we could have gotten. Now, while this figure does not possess any of the Minicon gimmicks, um, the features that would be unlocked by the Minicon are still present, namely the flip-out cannons, which in jet mode just come out this way and face forward over the cockpit. Very nice, no muss, no fuss. Um, you know, there's no projectile, no spring-loaded missile, so that's a little disappointing, but it is nice to be here. Also, I noticed that the... Uh, Jet itself is a little more streamlined than what I remember from the original toy and cartoon. I did eventually did get a uh, star screen just because I, you know, had to have it. And it what it is fun, and these are fun to have. So who knows if we're going to see a blue version or even a version done up as Skywarp, which really had a lot of retooling done, especially with the head, and was treated as a completely different character. Um, in fact, the Transformers Collectors Club and the Universe line had some fun with um, 
Did I say Skywarp? Yeah, was it Skywarp or um, Ram? No, it was Ramjet. Excuse me, it was Ramjet becoming a herald of Unicron in a white and blue version. That was uh, a lot of fun. So, not a lot to say about vehicle mode. We'll pause and get into the transformation. Okay, transformation is very easy for the most part. Um, first thing you want to do is come underneath, and you're going to basically pull up on the arms here, bring it up straight. There is a tab on the back of the bicep that uh, plugs into a slot in the wing, and you want to make sure when folding the arm up, you do fold it up on the double joints there as far as it'll go that it'll sit flush. Next, what you want to do, uh, there's a little track that the arm sits on, and you want to push the arm in towards the main section of the figure, which would be the fuselage of the jet, for robot mode. Going into vehicle mode, you pull that out. So, just pop it in like that. Let's do it on this side. Now, at this point, the instructions would have you pop out the hands. We can actually wait to do that to the end. While the jet is upside down, you want to lift it up slightly, unpegging it from this back section. And then what you want to do is unpeg these panels here. And this is actually the, what I would say the trickiest part of the transformation um, going f to uh, vehicle mode. Because when you fold these legs up, you're going to unfold them here. Uh, you need to be able to fold them up all the way that the tip of the toe fits into that cavity there, as well as making sure that these panels don't get uh, uh, folded up because they uh, um, up against the leg section so they can peg together. So just flip that out, just like so. Flip it out, just like so. And then what you want to do is rotate the legs so that these fins are now facing towards you. Just like that. And uh, to make our lives a little bit easier now, we'll turn the jet right side up, quote, fold these panels up, they'll fit into the back of the leg, and then fold the feet out. They tuck in underneath this black section here. V Lots of articulation in the feet. There's a very nice ankle pivot there. And while you're here, using that tab, flip out the heel spurs. Just like so. You can go ahead and bring down this whole uh, chest, what will be now the chest section. That will reveal the head. Let me adjust the camera ever so slightly. Basically, um, in, on the original toy, it was a spring-loaded gimmick. Here, it's just, you know, natural friction. When you're in vehicle mode, the head's down. Press it down. And then here, when you're bringing it up, it'll just pop up like that. If it comes up on an angle, just make sure you have the head facing forward. Just like so. Just about done. Um, these front wings here, now you would think they fold up and you would think they would fit into the cavity right there. Well, unfortunately, the cavity is just not deep enough. So you need to angle them out slightly, fold down the nose cone, and that nose cone will peg into place on that tab. And there you have uh, the, the front of the chest done. And yes, you do have a waist articulation, a little limited, but it's there. To start finishing, finishing things off, bring down this back panel. Uh, that will bring down um, the uh, cannons, just like so. We'll get into that in a bit of a moment. And now what you want to do is rotate the wings down. They kind of friction into place here and grooves along what will be the shoulder and you can angle the wings back. There is a natural stopping point that you can't go further. Finally, open up the panels, fold the hand out. 
I don't remember on the original toy if the hands folded in, but there is that. And there we have Armada Starscream in its robot mode. And I have to say, it is a nice update to the original toy. Much better than the Thrilling 30 version. A um, few points of articulation I want to point out. You have a bowl-jointed head. Very expressive. Don't have a lot of side-to-side -side wiggle, but you have rotation. And can look up. So there is that. Um, the shoulders actually have a lot going on. You do have the forward and back rotation. You, this is the armpit joint, and as you can see, there is a little bit of a post there to try and cover up the gap. And the bicep swivel is here, and you have the double-jointed elbows as well, as well. No wrist articulation, which is a little disappointing when you figure that this, it, the main weapons of this figure are swords. Basic universal hips. Deep knee bend, and I, I'm sure there's a stand peg or something here some somewhere. So if you want to get him on a flight stand and do, recreate some of those classic poses that were on the box art and the assorted media for Armada that show Starscream, uh, there is that. And let's not even overlook the fact that this was a Starscream red, gray, black not the usual primary colors of Starscream. Now, of course, you can use the cannons in robot mode, and they do work a little bit differently. Basically, what you're going to do is now, this whole section will flip up, and the cannons will be over the shoulders. You will then bring this panel back down, and there are two tabs on either side, that will peg into place holding that panel there. So that's a nice little touch. Uh, Starscream's head, some of the articulation is now limited, but it can still have some movement. And of course, you can bring the cannons forward. So you really do have that full armor. And before we forget, there are plenty of 5mm po posts you can store the weapons on the wing in robot mode if you so desire. Um, if you have one of the the uh, mini cons from the various, from like uh, Siege and maybe Earthrise, you might find something that can facsimile um, its original mini con, um, Starscream's original mini con, which I believe was named Swindle. It was it was a race car, but it was named Swindle. And there you go. Let's get some uh, action posing right there. So yeah, so you do have, you know, your options. And one thing I do want to mention is while the Star Saber is hollow on one side and not the other, it's really not that bad. But because you do have the fin right there, the tail fin, that's what I would say is what you would want facing out. So cross the swords... And there we go. And, of course, now I have Starscream's head blocked by its swords. Um, bring that back. Now we'll maybe clear things up. But, as you can see, it's a really enjoyable figure. And it's something I do enjoy. Um, fantastic uh, addition to the Legacy line. Um, you know, I know for a lot of people... There's actually a lot of collectors now. They may not even have been around when Armada started. And I know a lot of people say that the movies, for the original 2007 movie, was their G1, their introduction to the line. But Armada, that was actually the introduction for a lot more people. Um, you know, contrary to modern history and Hasbro's retelling... Uh, Armada was very popular coming out of uh, the Beast era, as it was, as while R.I.D. was a bit of a stopgap, Armada was the first real return to form in terms of vehicle-based uh, Transformers. And 
don't hold me to this, I think it might still be the most successful uh, Transformers line in Japan. Whereas the Beast era really did not do well in Japan, and Takara was going to end Transformers for a bit and focus on its other brands, which, you know, Takara in the early 2000s, that's a whole nother thing. Um, Armada saved Transformers, or as it was called, Micron Legend. So, very important line at the time. So, we'll pause, and we will come back with my final thoughts. I wasn't sure how Starscream was going to come out, but I have to say I am very impressed by the quality of the figure. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that on mine, the legs feel a little loose, and before you have everything pegged into place and secure, the figure might feel a little floppy. But again, that just might be my copy. Your mileage may vary, which is perfectly fine. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what more they will do in terms of Armada. I know we have Hotshot coming, so maybe this is actually a shared accessory, the Star Saber with Hotshot. Um, so that will be kind of interesting to see. Uh, who knows what uh, Takara Tommy might do because they actually had a uh, did Hotshot as a deluxe figure with the the Star Saber Minicon team back in the day, and even gave the figure a light up hand that it could illuminate the translucent plastic. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, and uh, <laughs> um, that that figure probably sold for less in Japan than what a deluxe sells for now. Eh, prices were different. Eh, you young whippersnappers, you don't know how, how good we had it back in the day. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a little silly now, but um, definitely if you see a Starscream at retail, pick it up. Um, if you want to take a chance and wait to see if there's going to be a blue repaint, you can do that too, but... If there is, I'll definitely grab it, because uh, that was really my first Transformer after 15 years or so. Um, but that's about it for the review. If you like this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Why I appreciate the views, the likes, comments, and subscriptions help to communicate to YouTube through their algorithms that my channel should be exalted and held upon high. Uh, if you want to make the ultimate sign of support, I do have a Patreon. It is www.patreon.com. Uh, no, yeah, .patreon.com slash chuckdog1999. A little bit late here today, folks, so I'm a little out of sorts. Um, all I ask for is a dollar a month, $12 a year. Um, no thrills. No tears, no special rewards. All you're doing is helping me help you, help me help you to bring figures like Starscream to you and keeping up the infrastructure of the channel. You know, going back and looking at some of my older videos, it is uh, kind of interesting to see where even a few years ago I w was in terms of quality of footage and production and how just recently there seems to have been like a major step up, which... Can't complain about that. But as I always say, and I really make a point of stressing this, if you cannot do the dollar a month, $12 a year, your views are more than thanks enough. Patreon is just a cherry on top of an already generous Sunday. I know times are tough. I know the holidays are coming. So uh, worry about yourself. I'll be fine. That's about it for the review. This is your old pal Chuck for Armada Starscream. We will see you next time.